communities have long raised capital from investors to build bridges, schools, and other public projects. The model in this country where local governments make decisions about what they want to build and how they want to fund it is a model that works, and it works very well. And frankly, it's a model that other countries seek to replicate. The issuance of municipal bonds dates back to the early 1800s. For much of this history, the market operated without regulatory oversight. And what happened in the late 60s was that you had a number of firms start to engage in, you know, absolute garden variety fraudulent behavior with respect to municipal bonds. Early bond customers were primarily banks, insurance companies, and other large institutional investors with the sophistication to look out for their own interests. This changed in the 1970s when tax reforms made the municipal market more attractive for retail investors. In the case of New York City, for instance, retail investors were sold millions of dollars of deficit-plagued New York City bonds until the city came to the brink of default in 1975. As a result, in June of 1975, Congress created the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board to provide national oversight of the municipal market. Because of New York City, and all these other places that were in, in trouble, there was also a, a, a feeling that you needed some set of rules for the industry. Congress charged the MSRB with protecting investors and the public interest by promoting a fair and efficient municipal market. The MSRB immediately set out to fulfill this congressional mandate, developing professional qualifications and standards of conduct from municipal securities dealers. We try to very definitely have a balance between the proper regulation, not too much regulation, but the regulation which would uh, steer the industry on a proper course. In the 1990s, the MSRB zeroed in on the prevalent practice of pay to play, which threatened the integrity of the market. Sometimes that the broker dealers would make friends with the mayors or make friends with the boards and you were basically given a broker dealer to work with. Concerned about even the appearance of corruption, the MSRB established its landmark rule to curb pay to play practices, Rule G37. There clearly was a period before G37 where people thought you were just buying away the industry and it wasn't about capabilities. I think that's cleaned it up a lot. Absent these rules, the public is at risk of a great disservice being done in the potential inefficient execution of very big financial decisions. Helping market participants make informed financial decisions has long been a cornerstone of the MSRB's mission. But for many years, information about municipal bonds had been difficult to come by. The municipal market, I think, unfortunately, was lagging in technology. It was clearly largely a paper market. Uh, documents were in paper form. We had delivered documents to investors in paper form. In 2009, the MSRB dramatically enhanced access to municipal securities information with the creation of the Electronic Municipal Market Access, or EMA, website. Being able to access the information uh, allowed me to be able to challenge underwriters to say, this is something that we need to improve. EMA has also shed light on the municipal market as a whole. So it's given us a great deal of, of data to understand the behavior of the industry and how capital uh, makes its way to the public sector. The increasing volume and complexity of information available about municipal securities helped foster the growth of a new class of professionals to advise state and local governments. There are many issuers in the muni market that issue once a year, some that issue once every three or four years. Uh, that does not give you the ability to be uh, as skilled and informed on new products. Congress determined that issuers like these needed to be able to rely on the advice of regulated and qualified professionals. With the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act of 2010, Congress charged the MSRB with regulating municipal advisors 
and protecting their issuer clients. The Dodd-Frank legislation singled out the MSRB not so much for reform, but for augmented responsibilities of not only protecting the investor, but now explicitly protecting the issuer. As the MSRB enters its 40th year of protecting the public interest, the regulator is committed to its expanded mandate to protect investors, issuers, and the public interest. I'm very confident that the MSRB will continue to be a, a very neutral, credible source of information about the market to policymakers, to Capitol Hill, to other federal and state uh, elected officials and policymakers. And I think the market now enjoys a very strong reputation uh, with a lot of investor confidence. And um, I do attribute that to the existence of the MSRB.